everyone and welcome back to the Critter Corner. Whether you live in the US or not, I think we've all heard of PetSmart when talking about reptile care. I was recently at PetSmart to pick up some enclosures and while I was there, I thought I would pick up some care guides and review them on my channel. So I picked up a few. I picked up the Hermit Crab one, which is super excited to review. The Leopard Gecko one, in the Crested Gecko one. And then also one of my enclosures, my zoom in enclosure came with a beginner's guide to amphibians. I don't have any amphibians, but I do want to show this and talk about what's in it, but I can't be too critical because I don't have amphibians. But I did want to mention this since I have it um, and I thought it was interesting. So these three are what we're going to start with. I'm actually going to start with the Hermit Crab one because I feel like that's the most important. Hermit crabs, I think, are currently $5.99 at PetSmart, and they are all wild caught. Hermit crabs are very cheap pets, but they require very expensive setups. I had four hermit crabs, um, and unfortunately, they all passed away, but I am very knowledgeable about hermit crabs. I absolutely love them. I love to advocate for them, but they are so difficult, I don't think I'm going to keep them again. So I picked up this care guide. We're gonna get right into it. People see hermit crabs as disposable pets, especially at PetSmart because they are so cheap. And I'm just, I'm just excited to look at it. Okay, I have the hermit crab one out right now. Let's open it up, start reviewing. So hermit crabs, social and adventurous, true. They carry their homes on their backs. I mean, that's also true. Experience of a beginner. I would argue that the wild caught hermit crabs are not beginner because they are going to have so many issues. Um, they're also pretty expensive to set up. Size hermit crabs can grow up to six inches, sure. Lifespan, they live approximately 10 years. So that may be true for wild caught ones. Hermit crabs can actually live around 35 years, up to 35 years, especially if you have captive bred babies. But if you're getting a wild caught one, 10 years may be pretty accurate. Habitat. Hermit crabs live on land, not in water, and curl up in empty shells for protection. True. As their lower body does not have an exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. Yes. In addition to protection, the shell also retains water to keep a hermit crab's lower body moist. So that's very true. Um, hermit crabs will store water in their shell. So I'm surprised they have that in there. I mean, that's pretty pretty accurate. I'm interested to see that that's like the only thing they put in habitat. Um, but we'll see. Okay. Behavior. Despite their name, hermit crabs thrive in groups. True. You can handle them carefully, but they may chirp and pinch if threatened or scared. So I would say that's pretty true. They really shouldn't be handled at all. I want to see if it talks more about that later. Hermit crabs come out of their shells and bury themselves when they shed their skin, a process known as molting. Then they can change their shells because they've grown important during molting. Hermit crabs' bodies are soft, so do not handle or disturb them. That's accurate. And it's good that they put that in all caps. Um, hermit crabs, you shouldn't dig them up or touch them or anything while they're molting. Um, and it's great that they stress that. I feel like they can even stress it more than they did, but very important. What should I feed my hermit crabs? Pelleted food for smaller crabs that cannot pick up pelleted food. So they shouldn't have any pelleted food, um, especially the stuff that they sell at PetSmart. So that's inaccurate. Powdered greens, power greens and fruits. Yep, water must have access to fresh dechlorinated water in marine grade salt water at all times. Yep, um, the marine one also needs to be dechlorinated. I don't know if that's just assumed, but they did not write that in there. When should I contact a veterinarian? Decreased appetite or activity, staying outside their shell, excessive molting, lost claws or limbs, strong odor from inside the shell. So the thing with hermit crabs is they are so sensitive and prone to stress. Taking it to the vet could stress it to death. I would recommend if any of this stuff happens, asking someone for advice or looking up like Googling and stuff or calling a vet. But there's not much your vet is going to be able to do to your hermit crabs. Hermit crabs aren't put through surgery or anything. They're just so sensitive. So, I mean, it's great that they put this stuff on here. Decreased appetite or activity, very important. If your hermit crab is not active, they are most likely something's wrong. Staying outside of their shell is an emergency. Um, crab Central Station has a great video on what to do if that happens. Excessive molting. They, they molt if they need it, but lost claws or limbs. Um, that could be like damage from molting or an attack from another crab, but they will regenerate lost claws or limbs. Strong odor from inside the shell. 
Um, if your hermit crab has any strong odor, it might already be dead. But all, all things to keep in mind. So let's see. Oh gosh. The first thing I'm seeing wrong in here is that the it has a screen lid. Hermit crabs need a glass lid to keep humidity in. That is something that's very important. And it says they need a drinking water dish and a soaking dish. So salt and fresh water should both be soaking dishes. They should both be deep enough for them to soak in. If you're if I want to nitpick this, there's three crabs in here and there's one, two, three, four shells. Each crab needs three to five shells, so there should be way more shells. But I think everything there's something blatantly wrong with this. Um, I think I pointed out pretty much everything. They don't have any hides though. They have no hides. So hides, but let's read. How do I set up a hermit crab terrarium? House your hermit crabs in a terrarium that has 10 gallons of space for every two crabs. So that's just not true. They need 10 gallons of space for every crab. So if there's three crabs in here. It should be at least a 30 gallon. Mine the bottom of the terrarium with a 50-50 mix of natural sand and cocoa fiber soil to mimic their natural habitat, their natural coastal habitat. Be sure that the bedding is three times deeper than the height of your crab. The depth of the soil is most important when your crab is playing. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, it's usually a 70% play sand, a 30% topsoil or um, eco-earth mix. I made a mistake when filming this. It's actually a five to one ratio. So five parts play sand and one part ego earth. Um, I just got mixed up with leopard geckos in this video, but yeah. And then three times the height of your crab. Yeah, um, it should be generally at least six inches, but three times the height of your crab is pretty good too. Create several hiding spaces in their habitat. Add at least three to five larger shells per crab. Okay, so you should have larger shells, but they should also, you should also have some that are the same size, just in case they don't like that shell. But three to five shells is accurate. They don't have that in the picture, but yes, they also don't have hiding places in the picture. So that information is accurate though. Combination of thermometer and hydrometer is needed to measure temperature and humidity. Crowds prefer temperature 75 to 85, yes. Add under the tank heater if needed. So they should have a heat pad, but it shouldn't be under the tank. It should be on the wall of the tank, which I don't have that. The back wall is where it should be. Um, current crowd starting to keep humidity 70 to 80 percent. Okay. Miss with spray bottle. Yeah. So you're not going to miss them with a spray bottle. That can cause bacterial blooms, it can cause a lot of issues. You need your pools to be big enough for them to soak in, which I don't know if they're going to mention that. Um, I hope they do. But you need pools for the, them to be big enough to soak in, and those pools should be big enough that it will maintain humidity without misting. Hermit crabs can benefit from low levels of UVB light. That's actually really awesome that they have that. Um, that is true, but you can't have a screen lid. So if you have UVB, you have to have a glass lid and then put it inside their enclosure um, because... UVB doesn't travel through the glass, but that's awesome that they mentioned that. Add two shallow dishes, one with fresh dechlorinated water for drinking and second dechlorinated for soaking. Yeah, so the fresh water should also be deep enough for them to soak. Shallow, they should be deep enough for your crab to fully submerge in, so they shouldn't really be shallow. Make sure the sides of the soaking dish are low enough to get out easily. True. Um, hermit crabs can, in fact, drown after a long time, but... There should be easy ways to get in and out of the the soaking tubs, but you can do that with them still being deep. Just have like a ladder. If your terrarium includes hermit crabs of different sizes, put a rock in the bowl so the small one can climb out. Okay. No, don't use sponges. That's awesome that they put that. Don't use sponges which harbor harmful organisms. Which harbor, wait, which harbor harmful harmful organisms? I think that's a typo, or they just really want to stress that they're harmful. Um, okay, but yeah, don't use sponges is awesome. I have not seen that from PetSmart yet. So that's pretty much the whole care guide. On the back, it says what you need, grass or acrylic, terrarium, okay. Secure, screen lid, yeah, so not a screen lid. You need a glass lid, reptile, that's fine. Under the tank heater, yes, but it should be on the side of the tank. Yeah, so... They shouldn't be really shallow, and you don't need a spray bottle. Coconut, huts, cave, artificial plants. Yep. Um, preferred hermit crab food and cuddle bug. Okay. 
you shouldn't have a prepared hermit crab diet really you should be fr feeding fresh fruits and vegetables but cuddle bone guys is awesome i didn't know they mentioned that either cuddle bone's great um and that's pretty much the whole thing so i would rate this one probably like a five out of ten um i did like they said don't use sponges they put cuddle bone they put three to five shells. They put correct humidities and temperatures. But the screen wood is really big and the misting is really big. And also the enclosure being too small. Those are really big things in pellets. So there's a lot of things. But overall, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So there's the hermit crab one. Okay, so next up we have the eyelash crested gecko. I love how it says eyelash crested gecko like that's like a subspecies they're all eyelash crested geckos but getting to know your eyelash crested gecko same thing developed and approved by pet smart veterinarians let's open this up oh this one's even smaller very interesting high climbing and low fuss yeah, okay they're named for their distinct ridge above their eyes yep experience level beginner honestly I think for a reptile, they are beginner. Eyelash crested geckos grow up to 10 inches. They can live for more than 10 years. Yep. And they love to climb. Awesome. Um, they can live probably more than 15 years. I would put that, but 10, whatever. That's fine. Um, this terrarium looks okay. <laughs> terrarium screen lid, heat lamp, and daylight bulb. Okay, we'll get back to that and decor so while i'm looking at this um the food and water are not elevated so ideally they would be on a ledge right here and then this looks like a heat uvb type thing coil uvb um your crested gecko most likely does not need heat but we'll look at the temperatures they put here so but if it's cold in your house they might need heat and then also uvb this one's coil they don't really benefit from coil uvb so we'll come back to that but everything looks okay it says coconut fiber or reptile bark coconut fiber reptile bark or moss bedding okay fine daytime temperature 75 to 80 on the cool side whoa okay 75 to 80 on the cool side 80 to 85 on the warm side hello okay so wow i would honestly do 70 to 75 on the cool side 75 to 80 on the warm side 80 if your gecko is consistently at 85 degrees it is going to overheat and probably die have a lot of issues interesting nighttime temperatures 65 to 75 that's that's fine humidity 50 to 80 that's fine okay how do I set up the terrarium? They can live in groups, but do not house more than two males in a tank. More than two males? Excuse me? Okay. They can live in groups, which honestly is not true to begin with, but do not house more than two males in a tank. So they're saying you can house two males? Okay. Anyways, also if you have a... 20 gallon oh my gosh okay let's get into this so they can live in groups not really true unless you have like a eight foot by like four foot tank like no they four foot by eight foot they're not gonna live in groups don't they're solitary animals do not house more than two males in a tank don't house more than one male in a tank they're solitary if you put two males in there they're going to kill each other one gecko needs a minimum of 20 inches high, 20 gallon tank with a screen lid. So screen lid's fine. It should be 24 inches high. Um, I think that's 30 gallons. This is 18 by 18 by 24. Line habitat with repti carpet or two to three inches of cocoa fiber moss bark bedding. Repti carpet, okay, reptile carpet's a no-go. That's going to rip out nails, toes, teeth, all that. Um, cocoa fiber is fine. Remove droppings and spot clean frequently. Okay, change bedding monthly. Okay, that's, that's fine. Out of rock or wood for hiding. I would be weary of rocks. Do they have rocks in here? Yeah, I mean, just make sure they're stable. Um, I just wouldn't want them to crush your crested gecko. 
Branches, okay. Mist habitat daily, okay. Retire temperature gradient, cool on the bottom, warm on the top. Cool. Use a low wattage heat bulb or a ceramic heat emitter to provide warmth. Okay, if you need warmth to keep those temperatures, that's fine. Turn the heat element off for 12 hours at night as long as the ambient room temperature does not drop below 65. Awesome. Equip the habitat with two thermometers, one for temperature, one here for humidity. Yeah, they you shouldn't use this one. You should use like a digital one, but yeah. Okay, for more information, consult. Guys, they didn't provide much information here. Anyways, especially about like behavior. What should I feed my crested gecko? Young crested geckos, one insect every other day, gut loaded, dust with calcium. Okay, this is all fine. Offer powder, powder diet, okay. Clean water, daily provide at all times. That's awesome. They should have a water dish, which they do in here. So that's awesome. Okay, this is fine. Um, Insects other, every other day for youngs, once a week for adult. They do put gut loaded in here, which is great. Crickets are dubious, that's fine. Okay, does it say how often to feed? Always offer a nutritionally. So for adults that absolutely devour their food, you're not gonna always wanna offer it because they would never stop eating, but okay. When should I contact the veterinarian? Hiding more than usual. I don't know if that's a veterinarian thing, but if you're worried, you can. Eating or drinking less, weight loss, yep. Swollen joints, reluctant to move, yep. Discharge from eyes, no mouth or skin, yep. Shedding problems, shedding problems, you might just need to boost your humidity. Discolored skin, discolored skin is interesting because crested geckos fire up and fire down, which I don't think it talks about in here. I also don't think it talks about them dropping their tail. So they could just be fired down, but if you think it's an issue, then contact your vet. Um, runny droppings for more than two days, okay. Decrease frequency of droppings, okay. Increase basking time. Oh. Again, increased basking time might just be that they're cold, but okay. So they didn't mention firing up or firing down. They did mention discolored skin, which is interesting. They didn't mention them dropping their tail, also interesting, or that they're like jumpy or anything like that shopping checklist 20 gallon 20 24 inches tall yes or larger screen lid habitat daytime daytime heat lamp and bulb i mean if you need it you know this is all fine yeah this should be like a ledge though because it should be elevated okay this is fine but this the co having thing is deadly same with reptile carpet so I would give this, honestly, probably a 4 out of 10. They didn't put that, this needs to be elevated. They put, you can cohab them, they put reptile carpet, and they didn't talk about them being able to drop their tail, or really their behavior at all. So, not the best from PetSmart. Okay, leopard gecko, let's see. This one is also smaller than the red crab one. Spotted and spectacular. Wow, okay. Leopard geckos, they have functional eyelids that make them distinct from other geckos. Okay. Beginner, sure. Leopard geckos grow up 10 inches on average. They live for 15 to 20 years. Perfect. Middle East, warm, dry environment with moist hiding spot. Awesome. So let's see. Oh my. Reptile carpet, not great. This also looks like a pellet food, maybe? Um, and they don't have a human hide. They have one hide in here. Okay, let's see what it says. Daytime temperature on the cool side. Excuse me? Okay, daytime temperature on the cool side, 75 to 90 degrees. Your cool side probably shouldn't be more than like 80 degrees. 90 degrees on the cool side is crazy. Daytime temperature, warm side, 85 degrees to 95 degrees. That's fine. That's fine. 90 degrees? Oh my goodness. Night temperature, 65, 75. Humidity, 10 to 30. You can even go up to 40. Um, some people's houses are more humid than others, but yeah. One to two leopard geckos can be housed together in a 20 gallon. Whoa. Territorial behavior is observed. Increase the size of the habitat. So 
again, leopard geckos are solitary and the minimum is a 40 gallon. So one leopard gecko in a 40 gallon is what should be happening. Use reptile carpet or tile. Absolutely not. Reptile carpet, no. We talked about this with the crusted gecko one. Ripped out teeth, nails. Tile also is bad for their joints. They need to be on loose substrate. Move droppings at least once a week. Thoroughly clean. Ugh. Let's see if they even mention loose substrate in here. Leopard geckos, calcium absorbing can benefit from supplementary. 5.0 UVB light. Okay. I love that they're putting UVB. Leopard geckos require temperature gradient for the warm side. Use an under the tank heater. Under the tank heater. Absolutely not. You should not be doing that. Daytime heat lamp. Yeah, a daytime heat lamp should be there if necessary. They should always have a heat lamp for basking. Turn heater and lamp off for 12 hours. Yep. Okay. Equip the habitat with two thermometers. Miss your gecko every other day. So you might need to miss their humid hide every other day if your house is really dry, but you should not be misting your enclosure. I only miss like the plants in my enclosure once a week just so he can drink off of them. But you're not gonna keep 10% humidity if you're misting your gecko every other day. That's crazy. Keep their humid hide, sphagnum moss, give your gecko a rock branches, okay. Okay, so the only hide that they mentioned is the humid hide they didn't mention a cool or a warm hide interesting insects one times daily or every other day uh, <laughs> what okay if you're adult two times a month for adult okay for calcium if you're feeding your adult leopard gecko every other day they might get very fat but my needs once a week Water clean daily and provide all times. Perfect. When should I contact my veterinarian? When I drops more than really disagreeing frequency, hiding more than usual, eating, drinking less, weight loss. Yeah, so this is similar to the crustic gecko one. And that all makes sense. Let's see. 20 gallon. It should be a 40 gallon. <laughs> the screen lid, that's fine. UVB, yep. Daytime, nighttime basking. I think the five, the T5 is a 7%. Um, but you need 7%. You'd be under the tank heater. Nope. Habitat thermometers. If it's a digital one, reptile carpet or bedding. No. You need um, a 70 per No. 30% play sand and 70% topsoil. It's opposite of what hermit crabs are. Artificial natural rock. Sure. So they don't talk about cool or warm hide in here. Um, so they didn't. I don't think they said anything about pellets, so which is good. Yeah, so they do suggest live insects. Um, but it looks like there's pellets in that bowl. Okay. Leopard gecko one. Oh, this one really sucked, actually. I would give it like a 3 out of 10. I did not enjoy that at all. So we're going to quickly review this. I don't have any amphibians, but I thought it might be cool to show. Because this came with my enclosure. It came with my 18 by, no, 12 by 12 by 18 enclosure for my chameleon gecko. So this is what it says, lighting, heating. And this is like a book. It's pretty big. Semi-aquatic, fully aquatic. Just going to show this to you. You can pause it if you want when well, my hands are in the way. But, you know, terrestrial, arboreal. And they say white, what do they say for white tree frogs? For size. Oh, they don't say what size enclosure they recommend. They have a Pac-Man frog right here, too. But they don't say... Oh. 10 gallon per one. What does it say? They don't say anything. Interesting. And then this is just how to put together the enclosure. But... Water and humidity, a bunch of stuff. I thought this was just interesting to show. Oh, they do have UVB in here. That's great. So yeah, this is also a thing that PetSmart sells with their enclosures. Okay, so that was definitely an interesting review. Um, I haven't reviewed the footage yet, so I hope it wasn't just me like screaming into the microphone the whole time. But I was very surprised by this one. Um, it wasn't too bad, which is interesting. 
So I think the Hermit Crab one honestly was the best one. Very surprising. I think the second best one was the Crested Gecko and then the worst one was the Leopard Gecko one. Um, any of these, yeah, <laughs> I think any of these, some of the advice could end up with your pet dead. The Hermit Crab one, not giving them enough space could cause them to fight, dead. The Leopard Gecko one, Reptile Carpet, dead. Crested Gecko one, also Reptile Carpet, but also, um, putting two males together, dead. This one again, cohabbing, no, sorry, oh my gosh, cohabbing Leopard Geckos, dead. I'm so sorry that was so morbid but like I thought it was interesting I'm glad it seems like they're updating these just not fast enough with the research but it seems like they are updating these because I've seen some from before that were not as good as these but these are still not good um this guy is interesting I think it gives people a good overview of amphibians maybe what kind they would want to start researching this is not research this book it barely tells you anything but it tells you about what kind of habitat you want and then what kind of things you can put in that habitat like a boreal habitat it says green tree frog red-eyed tree frog or white tree frog and um like terrestrial habitat a uh, north american toad a newt or pac-man frog i think it gives you general information but it's interesting. All of this is very interesting. Um, I think this video is going to end up being kind of long. So um, I don't know if you guys like longer videos or not. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Let me know if you want me to grab any more care guides. I just did one with animals I have or had in the past. Um, but maybe I can collab with someone and they can help me review one. Maybe. So yeah. I'm thinking about doing some like in-person clubs. We'll have to see. But yeah, uh, very interesting. Let me know. Comment your thoughts. I would love to hear them. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.